Hi there. So making stems. Um, stems are really, really important, um, no matter who you're producing your music for. If you're sending it to a video game uh, house or you're sending it to a music library or anybody that's going to do mastering or possibly remixing of your music, having the music in stems is vitally important. It gives them flexibility. Uh, what is a stem? So um, it's a, basically an instrumental grouping. Um, so you might, for example, put all your woodwind instruments together, all your brass instruments together, all percussion or string instruments together. Sometimes it pays to separate out uh, other bits like bass or melody instruments if you've got a sort of strong lead melody that you want to be rid of. It also allows people to um, make alternate versions of your music as well. So without, if you've got a really strong melody, for example, you might do um, um, just a vocal stem. Um, which would allow another version to be made of your music without uh, vocals, a sort of underscore version, which is really, really, really useful, actually, particularly for music libraries. So what to do? Well, um, first thing I think is really, really important is to make sure that uh, you group things when you're actually composing. Now, when I'm, I'm in Cubase here, and when you start off uh, writing in Cubase, everything comes up great. I use a color, color, co color coding and folder system quite early on in the composition process. Um, and this then feeds down into my stemming process, if that makes sense. Now, there's, there's, a, there's logic to that in that I think if you're fairly organized and color coded early on, it just allows you to visually see what things sound like, if that makes sense. You can see the individual colors, the individual families a little bit better. So all I simply do is just put a make a folder for each group or each stem that I think it's going to be, and then put the instruments in there and color code. There's no great art to my color coding. I always have strings, this yellow color, golden color for some reason, but everything else is fairly random. Um, so that's the first thing. I think that's really, really important. Um, Worth saying that percussion, uh, I would always separate out tune percussion. So for example, Glock's music box xylophone here. So percussion that can play melody with um, non-tuned percussion. So bongos, shakers, drums, etc. stuff like that. Uh, so you've, you've sort of stemmed out already, actually, in your composing, pro pro composing process. You know um, what you're doing visually right the way from the from the get-go. Let's just make it a bit smaller so you can see the whole track. In fact, let's shrink it down like that. There we go. So that's the whole thing. And these, these are the stems. Um, yeah, I mean, as I said a minute ago, you may have a separate piano stem. I always find harp a bit difficult to put in. It should go technically, it should go with strings, but it's a different sort of idea to strings. You might stem out your strings separately to upper strings and lower strings, depending on the type of track you're writing. Uh, pizzicato strings, maybe spiccato strings. It's also worth remembering that, as I said a moment ago, stemming out the bass parts separately. I tend not to do um, string bass, for example, in there, or um, if I had an electric bass, I wouldn't put it in with the other sort of electronic instruments, so I'd separate it out. Um, the reason being, I personally haven't got a subwoofer, um, and I know my I tend to mix a little bit bass heavy on these these are Yamaha NS somethings NS eights or something, um, which sound absolutely great. They're fine, but they haven't got a massive amount of low end. So sometimes I do tend to overdo that. So I think keeping the bass separate is sometimes a really really good idea, unless you're super confident. Um, and then it's really, really simple. In Cubase, there's two ways of doing it. I, I tend to manually do it. I just, then just highlight each of the groups and stem them out like this. So um, you just do this, go edit. What am I doing? File, export, audio mix down. Um, name it up here. So this track's called Wink and Whisper. Wink and Whisper. Different people will have different ways of doing this, but I would do something like woodwind and I would make sure that it's clearly marked as a stem like that. Um, this particular library wants them as AIFF files, 4824, check everything, everything in here and then send it to where you're going to go and then export it. Uh, sometimes I will click this here and get it to create an audio track so I can actually see the stem down the bottom here and I can make sure there's audio all the way through it. Same thing for uh, then switch that off. Do the same thing for tune percussion. File, export, audio mix down. Just change in here to tune percussion. 
and off we go. So really, really straightforward. There is a way in Cubase. I don't know how to do it, to be honest. Uh, I don't think it's here. Oh, here we go. Multiple. That There's some, something here I would need to look up how to do it, but if you want to explore this further, you can in Cubase um, actually automatically set it to do your stems all in one go, if that makes sense. I, I don't really trust that. I tend to do it manually and just check them as I go. Final thing to point out is that um, if you're creating stems, you may well be sending stuff for mastering and you'll be asked on your, your main out, your main stereo out to keep stuff at a certain level. So main, minus 4 dB or something like that. Um, the stems themselves, don't you don't need to change the levels on the stems. You just keep them um, as they are so that when you put them back into your project and stick them and stack them on top of each other, they they sound and have the same level as the whole thing altogether. So there's no need to rechange the levels on your stems. The other vital, vital thing, which I didn't say, is that it's really, really important that for every stem, you mark the beginning and the end of the track, and that doesn't move. So in Cubase, we have the marker here uh, at the beginning, a fraction of a second before the track, and at the end here. Um, and that, let me see, see it here, there's quite a lot of lead out here. It's really, really important that that doesn't change for each of the stems. Uh, if you're in any doubt that you've moved these markers or anything as you're st stemming out, then you have to restart again. Um, because because they need to line up so that when you slot them back in or whoever's going to slot them back into the project, they automatically line up and they're, they're, they're not out of, out of synchronization with each other. Okay, hope that was useful. Um, see you in the next video.